it's very very intense you guys i mean the show is very like oh my god it's very very welcome back to my channel thank you so much for clicking on this video if you're someone who enjoys talking about film or in this case netflix series then consider hitting that subscribe button so we're gonna be talking about money heist or casa de papel part two i did review season one um about a week ago now or a week ago actually so you can check that out on my channel i'll go ahead and link it up here it is a review in Spanish. I don't do very mean. Well, it's probably actually my third video in, uh, in Spanish, but I thought it would be fun to do it in Spanish. But I think from here on out, I will do the rest of them in English. I don't know. We'll see how I feel during that time period, whether I do them. I shouldn't say I won't, but who knows. This one is going to be a semi spoiler review because there are certain things that happened in this season that I do want to talk about, and it does go into spoiler territory. Now, Unlike season one when we got 13 episodes in season two or part two, I think that's how they put it as part, not season. <laughs> um, this one, it is just nine episodes compared to the 13 episodes again that we got in season one. Uh, season two or part two, I know I just said to call it whatever you guys. So part two picks up right um, how part one ended with um, Salva or the professor and um, Inspector Raquel are at the villa. Uh, they end up finding out that this is the hideout of you know the, the people that are stealing at the mint of Spain and it gets very very intense you guys. I mean the show is very like oh my god it's very very thrilling. It gets your your anxiety pumping you're just like oh my god when are they gonna get caught are they gonna get caught but you have to have faith in the professor because that man literally is like 10 steps ahead of all the cops he is playing chess everybody else is playing checkers this season not only do we have like that thrilling anxiety level to it that drama uh, but we do have just like a little bit of humor it was more so towards like the beginning like the first few episodes or not the first episode i honestly don't even know if i was supposed to laugh but i found something pretty funny and also most importantly something new that this season brought that season one did it was the emotions you guys like i literally cried because we do have a few deaths here um and we will talk about that later on and that's where my main spoilers will kind of go on we'll be talking about the people who died now in season two tokyo does continue to uh be the one who does the narration at the beginning or throughout the story which makes it seem like she is the um protagonist but honestly this season that kind of leadership or that kind of role really kind of fluctuated a few times it went from um, um tokyo to berlin um to nairobi nairobi in this season honestly did shine not as much i hope to see more of her shine brighter <laughs> um in the seasons to come i mean she's also a bad bitch here too you guys nairobi let me let me, let me actually talk oh my god yeah no yeah no i go all over the place and i have no structure whatever i gotta say it as i'm thinking about it because otherwise i forget Nairobi in this season you guys she showed us like that real badass that she is I mean we saw it in season one as well but she really stepped up the game here to where she even took charge Rio I mean, I, we're just gonna like, kind of go with the, the the people Rio really did get on my damn nerves like I said he is kind of like the weakest link, link um here in this group he is the baby he's the youngest one there and because he's so fully in love with tokyo because of their relationship it really does mess up a lot of things up and you know you're not really thinking logically and one of the things i don't even know if i mentioned that in season in my first review you know this is the main reason why the professor didn't want a relationship to be you know happening or, or spawn within this group because errors will be made because you're thinking about your relationship and you know when you're in the middle of a, of a heist of the biggest heist there is stuff like that your heart needs to be put aside and you need to focus on the main thing i mean obviously it's a story we have to have some drama but i get where the professor was coming from with that particular role of course roles are meant to be broken and who else to break it but fucking tokyo arturo is still alive i really I really hope he does not make it toward the end of everything. I'm not gonna lie, um, I did see like the first few uh, minutes of season three. I am holding off on season three uh, for a while. We'll get to that later on. And I did see his future and I was not very happy with it. 
the success that that man's gonna have i'm not here for it but we will get to that once we get to season three's review there was a mutiny that happened between berlin and tokyo which you know caused certain situations there with tokyo um, again we're only talking about minor spoilers and i really don't want to get into that particular deal but tokyo again she's like cray cray and she pretty much ends up playing russian roulette with berlin ties them up well we're on the topic of tokyo you guys um ursula Cudrero, i think that's how you pronounce her name the actress that plays tokyo um can i have her bum there's a scene where you see her backside and i'm just like okay girl I wish I had that booty. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about the deaths here. There are three. None of the hostages, all the hostages do make it out. So we're not gonna say one, but we'll get to that person later. So Oslo unfortunately does die from that head injury that did happen to him in season one. It was death number two that was just, ugh. There's a lot of stuff that happens within that particular episode and yeah that one really got me now death number three is the one that i didn't want to talk about and that is none other than berlin yes he does die at the end of season two so he pretty much sacrifices himself so the rest of the game can escape uh, because the authorities are already inside the royal man of spain and he is holding these um you know the cops back with his heavy machinery now you could argue that it's more of a suicide kind of like the bomber suicide he's pretty much going on in his own terms because remember he does have that degenerative disease and he is supposed to die within you know the year the professor is begging uh berlin to go ahead and, and enter the tunnel so they have when they can go ahead and blow it up but berlin's like no this is the main reason why I wanted to talk about this death was because there's something that he said when he was talking to the professor to say their goodbyes. We do end up finding also something about these two characters like a certain relationship that they do have. We won't get into that um, either. Again, we're only talking like little minor spoilers here. La decadencia no está hecha para mí. ¿Te imaginas? Cayéndose me lavaba o perdiendo el control de mis esfínteres. No. Hace falta valor para eso. Prefiero esto. And again, this is the part that's like, is he really the villain or not? Because again, he is technically sacrificing himself. I did end up um, doing a little bit of research, just a little bit. Like I didn't get too, too much into it because the way that season two ends, it really ends like a season finale. Well, not a season finale. It ends like a series finale. So I had to look it up because I'm like, did it get canceled or is this just something that they ended it like this in case it didn't get it renewed or what happened? So apparently Casa de Papel in Spain, which is where the show takes place, did terrible over there. Like it was just, it was, it bombed over there, you guys. So they did, uh, so it did get canceled after two seasons. Now, well, I don't know if maybe they were just set up for two seasons because they did have a season finale. I mean, a series finale. I keep saying season. Netflix ended up purchasing this show for a whopping, you guys. Wait for it. Two dollars. Two dollars, you guys. And this show has exploded on Netflix. It is one of their, like, highest, like, successful series. The writers have said if they knew the success of the show they would not have killed berlin off when they did now when i did finish the uh the last episode of season two i was just like okay this is like interesting i was pretty content with the finale you know i'm like okay this is kind of cool i don't know well i kind of do i feel because i know that there are still three additional episodes i mean three additional seasons I wasn't like fully pissed off because I mean it does end in a really good way the professor and Raquel kind of coming full circle there with their whole charger of the phone situation again we're not going to go into full spoilers of how everything kind of happens as far as like Denver and Tokyo Rio like their ending how their characters kind of you know ended up going with the money it really does give you that that whole oceans vibe of how they always like you know come out like very unsuspect of course a couple unanswered questions but I didn't think about it until like a few days later I guess those are really my overall thoughts on season two I really really enjoyed it I think I think I enjoyed it more than season one. I feel like I had a little bit more like anxiety, thrilling situations happening. There were more stakes. 
I mean, like, were they gonna get caught? Were they not gonna get caught? Like, are they actually gonna escape? Like, what the heck is gonna happen? Overall, part two of La Casa de Papel is a more twistier thriller with an ingenious plot, blended characters with a great score that makes those thrilling moments that much even more thrilling bits of humor and some casualties along the way and all that put together makes this one of the best heist thriller series i think i've ever seen if you have not seen like i said papel i definitely recommend for you to get on it again it is five seasons now with that said um seeing that we are getting into october to spooky season i do have to kind of prepare myself for my 13 nights of fright it was very stressful last year which was my very first time doing this but i do want to prepare myself and be more like prepared so um i am going to kind of put a hold on the remaining of the seasons uh for now i probably well i say that for now but watch me be up here next week talking about season three but um i do want to kind of hold, put a hold because i know if i get to season three then it's gonna leave me with a cliffhanger season two did not leave me with a cliffhanger because again it was technically the finale the first series finale so i'm really gonna try to restrain myself on watching season three and the show is very very good so i do want to finish watching it but we're gonna we're gonna hold off on it you guys fingers crossed i can do it so yeah those are the plans for the upcoming month that is it for me today if you've seen casa de papel season two let me know down below what did you think about it did you like it did you love it did you hate it was it just not for you now we're only talking about season one and season two we're not talking about the rest quite yet so let me know down below which one do you prefer so far from these two from these two only you guys all right that is it for me today once again you can find casa de papel currently streaming on netflix and i highly do encourage you to watch it until next time i'll see you guys i can touch you Bye.